Now, beloved in the seven day of his church, beloved in the seven day of his church, this is a very urgent, urgent message, a very urgent, urgent message called Neo Pentecostalism and Cultural Relativism, the Death of Black Adventism. Neo Pentecostalism, Celebration, Cultural Relativism, the Death of Black Adventism. Now, here recently, at our churches, within, especially within the black work, the black Seventh-day Adventist Church, at Oakland University tonight for homecoming, and tomorrow at the main church through the um, virtual Sabbath, online Sabbath, because um, you can't actually meet in person because of the COVID-19 crisis. They're having a celebration style worship, drums and dancing and... Um, the same kind of calf-like worship that, came, that was under the uh, so under Sinai and under um, a Jordan when they went into when the when the men went into the pro, into the, um, into the into the into the temple for temple prostitution, they had wild music. They ride, they rose up to eat and drink and rose up to play. Had wild music and then had sexual orgies. With the woman in the sang in the uh, in the temple after they had their wild music, and look right here at Selected Message Book Two, the chapter called um, the Holy Flesh Doctrine, Chapter Three, shouting no evidence of sanctification, a repetition of early fanaticism, Section One, Page Thirty Six. It says, it says, the things you have described that's taking place in Indiana. The Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. They will be shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the movement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such methods and such a bellum of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods, making of none effect the pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. Better never have the worship of God blended with music than to use musical instruments to do the work which last January was represented to me will be brought into our camp meetings. The truth of this time needs nothing of this kind in, in its work of converting souls. A bellum of noise shocks the senses and perverse that which have conducted aright might be a blessing. The powers of satanic agencies blend with um, the din of noise and din of noise to make a carnival. And this is termed the, this is termed the Holy Spirit's working. When the camp meeting is ended, the good which ought to have been done, which might have been done by the presentation of the sacred truth, is not accomplished. Those participating in the supposed revival receive impressions which lead them adrift. They cannot tell what they formerly knew regarding Bible principles. No encouragement should be given to this kind of words from the same kind of influence um, came in after the passing of the time in 1844. The same kind of representations were made. Men became excited and were um, worked by a power thought to be the power of God. Now what is Sister White saying here, beloved? She's saying that all these drums, all this dancing, all this um, calf-like uh, Jeroboam-type worship, all this rock and roll and hip-hop or um, R&B and basically crossover music that just has Christian lyrics on it coming into the church. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such bellum of noise. And what it is, it's, it's Neo-Pentecostalism, which is the death of Black Adventism, and it's actually cold to relativism. They say, we can have this type of worship in our church, Oakwood says. We can have this type of worship in our church because it expresses Black culture. This is not Black culture. This is... This is the voodoo per, per, uh, person, personage of black culture. Culture should never supersede the word of God. We have a Christian culture, beloved, a Christian culture. Christian culture is over um, cultural relativism because in cultural relativism, you can support, you can support woman's ordination, which actually is using historical criticism or... Um, 
hired critical positions to support women's ordination or on historically conditioned arguments to support things like women's ordination. And that's the prism of whatever is, whatever is is right to you, whatever is is right to me. Let's all just get along. There's no absolute truth. Truth is relative. Truth is not absolute. That's the attitude they use, beloved. And it's a, it's a sad normative. A very sad, sad normative, beloved. Now, in the book of Colossians, in the book of Colossians, Colossians, Colossians 3, 16 and 17 states, um, tells us to sing in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to yourself and the Lord. That's what the scripture says in Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16 and 17, and Ephesians 5, 19, beloved. That's the scriptures right there. That's the scriptures right there, beloved. So it's, this is not just taken from a spirit of prophecy principle, but also from a Bible principle. And Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy or concerning of, witness of. And the Bible is the commandments of God But when you say, when you say, when you say that whatever is is right, heaven is your home, like the book Education says, chapter called Education and Character, chapter called Spiritualism. When you say truth is relative, believe what you what you want, heaven is your home. Page 228, education. When you say that, beloved, you're saying that my culture is above the Bible. I don't have to submit my wicked, pagan, African culture, my, my, my African mambo-jambo to the Word of God. That's what we're saying. My crossover, my worldliness to the Word of God. And the Bible says, any man be my disciple... Let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Look right here at Colossians 3, 16 and 17. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And also Ephesians, beloved. Look right here in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. This is all Bible here, beloved. All Bible, not just spirit of prophecy. All Bible. Ephesians 5, 19, it says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to your heart to the Lord. Now, what are psalms? Psalms is what comes out of the book of Psalms, like Psalm 119 and the, 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 the spiritual songs of David. Um, hymns. Like, um, a mighty fortress is our God. Like Martin Luther sings spiritual songs. Songs like that. Not, not worldly genres that come out of beats that come out of the nightclub. And they may, they may have told you in those lies in the history books that the songs that Martin Luther came, sung from, his hymns came from uh, music genres that came out of nightclubs in his day. Um, but, but don't believe those lies. And even if some of the Beats did come out of certain songs. It, it didn't have the, the syncopated rhythm that syncopates the heartbeat that gets you into um, not thinking clearly to make wise Christian decisions about spiritual guidance in one's life. So historically conditioned or higher critical arguments teach that um, it's things like 
your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. Live as you please, heaven is your home, which is not true. Most congregation, Father, please serve in your kingdom. I the lost, one look at the hearts of Christ. Let them be the Bible of prophecy. Let them not be deceived by cultural relativism, which says their truth is their truth, my truth is my truth, and be lost from, from your kingdom for not believing in absolute truth. In Jesus Christ, from our prayer, man. Mary, not for God bless you, beloved.